just a short video. Um, I've been working on this turntable. That's the uh, direct drive spindle for the for the platter. This is the tone arm, and this is an old JVC linear tracking turntable. So, <clears throat> what we have is the tone arms. Tone arm that assembly is on the um, that assembly is on a trolley that's driven by this steel wire, which in turn is driven on a rubberized section of this pulley which in turn is driven by a worm gear, which goes back via this belt, which was shot to a motor. And as a normal record player plays, the groove has to drag the tone arm across the record, and you have features like anti-skate and so on to keep the tone arm from getting away. With this system, there are two lights and photo sensors down here on the bottom of the tone arm, and that's its full range of movement. And as this is indexed over ever so slightly by the groove, the control board over here, which has a four bit processor on it, I've got the uh, the service manual. Um, I got this from roadside cleanup, like someone was throwing it out back when turntables weren't cool. Um, as, as the, um, as the tone arm moves a little tiny bit, the whole carriage assembly is indexed across the record. That's me manually actuating it. So why would you bother with this? I think some vertical turntables, <clears throat> well, I think vertical turntables had to do this, but why would you do it in this regular form factor? Well, you've got auto start um, for... 12 inch and 7 inch, you've got button controlled indexation of the tone arm and so on. So there are some convenience features there. Um, you're also stuck with buying esoteric styli. I got one back in the day. The one that was in it when I got it from cleanup was missing its diamond. Um, but with the amount I listen to records, I'd oh, go forever. I, I much prefer, well, and they're objectively better. I much prefer CDs. Although there is real pleasure in both the um the the knowledge of the of the diamond tracking through the groove and in the sort of feeling that comes from a sound mix and reproduction method that has its own character that that is is from from younger days it has a real nostalgia to it and that's why i go to this trouble and why i keep a box of records um why you do it like this is because the, the, the stylus sits in the bottom of the groove, which is where a lot more of the bass is too. Um, and, and because it's not being pulled to one side or the other, notionally bass response is better, stereo separation is better, wear on the record and the stylus is less. Um, the the uh, stylus is always at a, at, at a tangent, a, a near to perfect tangent to, to the, um, the micro groove. Anyway, a whole bunch in that, isn't there? Um, a bit of a rant, but that's okay. Um, I need to, now I've got this belt on, it's a bit skinnier than the original, but in the belt pack I got, that was all I could manage. Um, if it lasts for half the time the original one did, um, <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, and I think it'll be just fine. Like I say, it doesn't see a lot of use. Um, I'll get it all back, back together, buttoned up and started up. Like so many 240 volts appliances, it says, don't go in here, you'll get a shock. Um, over here, is that out of frame? Over here, there are wire wrapped posts for active and neutral and for the connection back to the uh, transformer. So there were like two centimeter tall, nearly metal spikes across here carrying mains voltages. I put a bit of heat shrink on them, um, but even still, I don't propose to turn it on while it's powered up. This was working fine, except for the fact that the tone arm stopped indexing. Um, and I think there can be no doubt that it is because of that drive belt. It's simply, you know, you could turn the motor and the belt wouldn't move. And, and there it is there. As you can see, it's taken a set. So the linear tracking turntable, why they might be cool, um, Honestly, the added complex 
complexity, as you can see, is immense. Um, it's just what I found left out on someone's footpath. Um, I, I cleaned the acrylic lid with some um, car polish and got it, got all the scratches out of it. Um, I put some white lithium grease on the rails this time. I used the wrong grease last time. It was a bit sticky. Probably didn't help with the belt life. Um, white lithium grease with PTFE in it, just the thinnest smear. And um, away we'll go. Oh, and while we're here, this this thing, as you can see, all these grooves in it. I think that groove there is sensed by this to let the turntable know where the home position is so it can park the tone arm in its cradle. And then I suspect these other two slots show the limits for the control circuitry of a 12 inch on the long slot and a seven inch for the short slot. Um, now it's, 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 um, it's excitingly primitive and yet very sophisticated. I mean, and probably the only one nibble wide, four bit wide processor I've ever seen. Um, and and it's, it's otherwise full featured. It's got stroboscopic RPM control and blah, 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 blah. Goodness me, it might even be crystal locked. I might have a look for a crystal later. I mean, normally they just pick it up off um, mains frequency, but who knows how they've done it here. Um, actually, it might even say on the front of the unit. No, not so that I can see. Would make sense to crystal lock it though. Anyway, that's the end of the video. And uh, happy um, happy vinyl recordings to me. A friend of mine's band's produced an album that I bought a long time ago. I've seen them live, but I still haven't listened to the album because I promised him I'd listen to it off vinyl first. So looking forward to that. Um, got another friend's record from their, his band in Adelaide, a guy I used to work with. Looking forward to finally listening to that. I've got a Steve Kilby record, and the other day I realised that the Tea Party CD that I wanted, the Tea Party are an amazing Canadian prog rock outfit that really only made it big big in Australia and, and Canada. Um, I've got a Tea Party record because I figured that, found out that for an extra kind of $15 over the price of the CD, I could get a, a CD and a record. So, um bit of Moroccan roll there for me. Um, apparently one of the guys is the same guy that wrote the music for the Prince of Persia games. Anyway, my mouth runneth over, the video endeth. Um, thanks for showing your interest.